how to make one of the coolest looking Minecraft renders. Hey guys, it's Chad. Recently on the Minecraft subreddit, I've been getting a lot of inspiration from the subreddit recently. Please Minecraft developers, come out with 1.13 snapshots. I need them. Um, well, recently uh, Matt Klug posted a question asking what program was used to make this render. And it's a really cool looking render. Uh, it looks almost like tilt shift where the background and foreground are totally out of focus. And MC Pittman actually fessed up in the comments and said, hey, I made that. I'm glad that you like how cool it looks. And I'm going to use this as inspiration to teach you how to make a, a Minecraft render that looks very similar to this. We've done tutorials on Chunky, which is the program that is used to make this. But this time I'm gonna take a little bit of a different step because there's so many features in Chunky that it's hard to do a tutorial all about it. So we're only going to focus on the settings you need to change in order to pull off a render that looks like this. So this is a Chunky launcher. All you have to do is make sure you have your Minecraft directory and as much memory as you want. I like to show the launcher. because Sometimes I like to change a few settings. Uh, then go ahead and launch Chunky. The first step is probably to find the right world. All you have to do is hit change world right here and you get a list of all of your worlds. The one that I'm working with is this world, the D world, and it will load in over here to the side and you can just kind of scroll out. Now, what you want to keep in mind is that you're going to be loading in chunks into Chunky and you want to kind of have an idea for how you want to frame your shot from the beginning. Uh, you can kind of see here, by the way, we can just click and drag this around. Uh, you can kind of see a little bit of elevation stuff, some trees, things like that. So we need to have an idea of what we want our render to look like, mostly because we'll need more terrain behind the camera in, or in front of the camera, I guess I should say, uh, if the camera's, uh, say, up here, we are going to want more terrain over here because the camera will become wider the further out that uh, we get. So let's keep that in mind and let's just go ahead and select an area just by holding down shift and clicking and dragging. And so this kind of this area back here is going to be a lot uh, bigger because the camera's going to be back there. And let's just make sure to grab... A whole bunch of other stuff just in case and we could even kind of grab something like this just to kind of get that nice wide angle of of space we're, we're not going to look through all the other tabs just because this isn't really a tutorial on how to use chunky it's how to get a certain look in chunky so once you're done with that go ahead and choose new scene this will pop up and you'll be given a little render preview and a control panel to work with. Now this is finalizing, this is uh, basically bringing in all of those chunks that you just selected. And that's one of the reasons why you don't want to select more than you need or too few than you need. Otherwise you won't have enough chunks in your scene. So let's rearrange these windows. The first thing to do is to change your canvas size to something that is usable. I'm going to choose 1920 by 1080 just because that's a nice big uh, 16 by 9 option. Now let's go ahead and actually move around. All you have to do is click in to the, uh, the, the scene here and you can drag it around almost as you do with normal Minecraft and you can use WASD to move the character forward. So let's get kind of an overarching view of the scene to figure out where to put the camera. In order to get that tilt shift look that uh, we're looking for, what we're going to want to do is move the camera pretty far away from our subject. And, our, and the subject in this case is this, uh, this village right here. And then we're going to want to make sure that there are things in the foreground and background that can be out of focus. So these trees are a great example, and those hills are a great example. Also, go ahead and place your crosshairs on something that you want to be in focus, and uh, I'll choose that well right there. Now we have positioned our camera far away, we've zoomed in, and we have this spot that we want to be in focus. Let's head on over to camera settings and let's go ahead and click this autofocus. And what this does, 
Uh, you could do this all on your own. You could create this crazy depth of field, and then you could figure out how far away that is in blocks from the camera. But this autofocus thing, if you just click it once, it will detect the block that you're landing on, which is apparently 262.064 uh, blocks away, and it sets this subject distance perfectly. Now, the depth of field, we want a lot more depth of field to get the look that we're going for. So we're just going to crank this up. And what's interesting is the lower the number, the more depth of field. So we're going to aim for something in the 200 to 300 range. Let's start with 200, the, the lowest depth of field. If we just hit render once, in the first few frames, we'll get a great idea of how blurry or how not blurry things are going to be. So this is already looking pretty fantastic. We want the light to kind of be on the opposite side. So I'm going to go ahead and stop it here because we have so much light in this scene. We don't need to go too crazy on the number of passes that Chunky is going to do uh, in order to get a nice look here. So I rendered only 137 uh, frames or uh, passes or whatever you want to call it, uh, ray passes uh, here. And I like, I really like how it looks. I think that this is a, a pretty good representation of the image that we saw earlier. When you're happy with how it looks, go ahead and click on save current frame right here, and you'll be prompted to save an image to your hard drive. And then you have the image. Once again, big thanks to MC Pittman for creating the original render and Matt Clug for giving me the inspiration for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like on this video. Please leave a comment down below letting me know your thoughts, and I'll see you next time on OMG Craft. Bye.